So you've spent a lot of time looking at M71. Yeah. Is it your friend? Uh, yeah, we have a, a love-hate relationship at the minute. <laughs> We're just going to take an image of uh, another relatively obscure globular cluster, M71. You say obscure, does this mean you don't know much about it? It's uh, just... Of course not, no. Um, uh, well, yeah, actually. It's not one of the sort of famous uh, targets in the Messier catalogue. So this telescope is at the Observatorio del Roque de los Muchachos <laughs> on the island of La Palma in the Canary Islands. This one is called the Night Telescope and it stands for Near Infrared Transiting Exoplanet Telescope. You guys love your acronyms, don't you? Yeah. Astronomers love those clever names. Yeah, I, I personally made that one up. At different times during the year, different objects are visible in the Northern Hemisphere, so they're only visible for around six months. When I installed this, the only nice globular cluster that was on its way up was M71. We wanted to look at a cluster to see if we could find any exoplanets in there because to date there haven't been any exoplanets found in an open cluster or in a globular cluster. An exoplanet is a planet which orbits a star that's not the Sun. To find one planet you need to survey roughly 10,000 stars and in M71 for this telescope there are only 4,000 visible. I observed uh, 60 nights. And did you find one? Uh, I'm still working on the data. <laughs> At this point we're just taking a snapshot exposure, just a mere 10 seconds exposure, just to make sure that the telescope is pointing at the globular cluster. Yeah, perhaps it's not a globular after all. It's open, doesn't it? Yeah. I've never actually imaged this one before, but I suspect this is going to be a fairly um, sparse globular cluster if there's such a thing. It doesn't look like it'll have that very compressed internal core like the famous globular clusters, so we'll just take a 30 second exposure this time and see if we can pick up a few more stars. It was originally a cluster which caused some controversy because it doesn't contain as many stars as the other globular clusters and it's not as tightly bound. So people originally thought it was an open cluster and it wasn't until people took coloured photometry of it that they realised that it was actually a young globular cluster. The difference is really the age. An open cluster is typically a young cluster of stars which is orbiting around the plane of the galaxy and a globular cluster is typically an older population of stars which orbit around in the halo of the galaxy. I assume that's it there. These objects here are all stars. The smaller pinpoints are just noise generated by the camera during such a short exposure. And we can take calibration frames that will remove that very successfully. It does almost look like an open cluster to me, but um, the terminology from the, uh, the pointing software says it's a globular, so uh, what do you reckon? So I've found a uh, new long period variable stars which were previously unpublished. A variable star can be uh, one of several things. You can have two stars which orbit in a, in a binary configuration and as they orbit you see eclipses in the light curve similar to that produced by exoplanets and then you also have stars which pulsate. The stars are evolving and are going through different nuclear processes inside which then cause the stars to inflate and deflate and they change their brightness every 40 days, so it's like a sine wave. So by studying the variable stars, especially the binaries, you can find out the original fraction of binary stars in the cluster environment, or you can determine the number of binary star systems which have been formed throughout the life of the cluster. This is a light curve for four different stars in M71. They're all eclipsing binary stars. This one here is a cool component and a hot component orbiting in a, in a binary configuration. And when you see the, the large dip in the light curve, this is when the cool star blocks out the light from the hot star and you get much less light. In this system, the two stars are of roughly equal brightness and they're actually touching. And that's why you see almost the same depth of the eclipse for both stars. What happens when a star evolves is its radius increases and when it gets to a certain point, it can overflow what's called its Rosh lobe. And the Rosh lobe is the limit where a star can hold on to the gas. And what happens when the radius of the star increases past the Rosh lobe is the matter from that star flows off onto the secondary star and they're essentially touching. This one is a very long period eclipse in binary. The time between the two eclipses here is five days. And you can see there's a very deep eclipse here and a shallower eclipse here. This is almost the same as this guy, where the, but the two components have roughly the same temperature as well. You can just see the dense region of the cluster here. And then obviously there's another part here, here and here and the cluster extends out to roughly about that size. So this guy here is star number 108, which is this star here. 